Tonight, we report on how the city of Quincy could help the Quincy Valley Medical Center cover a portion of the hospital's debt to Grant County, and firefighters in Moses Lake bring back the firefighters' breakfast to help buy winter coats for children. What's happening in sports, Bob? Big Ben Volleyball picks up a win over the Knights in Wenatchee, and a cleaning crew at Safeco Field is accused of stealing Mariner jerseys. Let's take a glance at our weather center forecast. And as we take a look outside our window, we're looking at a fantastic couple of days, but on the horizon, something pretty interesting. Midweek next week, the tales coming up. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on i 501 News. From the i 501 HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is i 501 News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Quincy may loan $1.5 million to the Quincy Valley Medical Center to cover a portion of the hospital's debt to Grant County. The City Council agreed Tuesday to begin negotiations with the hospital and Grant County. The hospital district's debt to Grant County rose as high as $4 million in the past year. Mayor Jim Hembury said that district officials have a plan to repay the debt. The city could earn more money from its investments and help the hospital at the same time. Quincy presently has $2 million from its water, sewer, street, and general budgets in the state investment pool. If the hospital isn't able to pay, the city would be able to recover the money from taxpayers. The council members will need to approve a final agreement. The Green Seed, Moses Lake's first retail marijuana store, is open for business. Reporter Jeff Chu met up with the store's owner and has the story. Moses Lake's first and only marijuana store is open for business. And as the Green Seed's owner, Amy Delugi, says, they've got poundage. That means plenty of weed, 16 strains of potent sativa and indica cannabis. I'm not really facing a supply issue, period. I never really have. We started out with about um, four strains, and now we're at a 12-count strain bank, and today we'll be hosting four more new strains out into the community, so we're about 16 strains. Uh, I've never had less than about seven pounds ever. One thing is clear with Deluji, she takes Washington State's new green industry and its state regulations seriously. With Amy's father, Dick Deluji, heading up store security, identification is required at the door. Inside the store has more than a dozen surveillance cameras covering every inch. Outdoor cameras are also visible. Customers are required to take off hats, sunglasses, and hoods before they are allowed inside. Deluji said there is no longer a supply shortage in the state. She is fighting price gouging trends that originate with the suppliers this industry to attempt to um, deplete the black market and um, I think that there's a lot of things to be taken into consideration. Number one is price. In order to bring the consumers off the streets and out of the and out of their original dealers we've got to com be comparative in pricing. Deluji and Kiki Anderson, both Moses Lake natives, sell marijuana from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday at the Green Seed. The store is located at 8240 SP Boulevard, Suite 3 in Moses Lake. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. The start of fall means it's time for some old-fashioned fun at the 12th Annual Harvest Festival at the Ryman Simmons House in Quincy. The Living History event relives the life as the pioneers knew it. People will have the chance to churn butter, milk a cow, help with wood-fired baking, play marbles and horseshoes, and press apple juice from a vintage cast iron press. The family-friendly event also offers tractor hay rides as well as barnyard animals for the children. People can also visit the general store, a recreation of the first store in town. Live bluegrass and Americana music will be provided by the duo Down the Road, and an old-fashioned hymn sing-along will be held at 1.30 p.m. at the Pioneer Church. The festival is free to attend and runs from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. with the activities provided by volunteers from the Quincy Valley Historical Society. The Ryman Simmons House is located on Highway 28 across from the Subway restaurant. 
Job seekers are invited to the annual fall hiring event, October 15th at Big Bend Community College. Nearly 300 employers will be on hand at the ATEC building at 7611 Bowling Street, northeast on the college campus. The event is free and open to the public. This year's exhibitors include both retailers and manufacturers, and several companies are hiring for the upcoming holiday season. For more information, contact event coordinator Debbie Carell at 509-793-2116. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be back right after this.